my grandfather was a particularly important influence on me. We would go down to the local market and, and he would make me draw whatever I saw. He taught me how to focus on details that I might not have seen as a young child. I actually didn't think too much about photography. I just thought it was a way of recording the family. And when I did, you know, smell my first dark room and process my first piece of paper and watch the image grow, I was completely hooked. project was really unusual for me. I was commissioned by the Minnesota Museum of American Art to photograph the Green Line. So I started photographing at Target Field and then walked and rode the Green Line to Union Depot. The reason why it's really unusual for me is I'm best known for portraiture and within this new project there's absolutely no portraiture. The reason why I took this project was to learn a little bit more and get out of my comfort zone. I am really interested in how an image or a group of images can create this visual map. And I was really interested in drawing a line. In fact, the project is called Line from one place to another. As much as I say that I'm not going to photograph people, they always end up in the photographs. Perfect. So I think the next stop is gonna be on University and between Westgate and, and mm -hmm. Raymond. Yeah. During the process of this project, I was really interested in juxtaposing different kinds of places along the line, from sort of abstract shadow casts to places on university that really shows the diversity of university. You got me? Because I'm leaning into the... Yeah, I got you. I am a better photographer with a large, cumbersome camera. It could be my Slavic background where I need to have a weight around my neck <laughs> in order to feel like I'm living and doing well. It forces me to make a better photograph because I do not have the ease, accessibility, and the economy of a digital camera, so the stakes are higher. I am Ukrainian-American, born in New Jersey. I come from a nationally proud and culturally proud family. In 1989, my parents started getting ill. That was a moment for me to start reconnecting with my heritage, and that began this lifelong journey. I've been very fortunate to receive a lot of funding that allows me to travel to Ukraine. I've received multiple McKnight grants that are Minnesota-based. I've received a Jerome grant, and I've received some international grants like the Fulbright and the Guggenheim. All of these together have allowed me to focus on this very long-term project that I would not be able to complete without. The beginning, the work became really about me visiting where my parents had come from. And then as I got more invested in Ukraine and more invested in what was going on there, I had focused on projects like children who lived in camps from Chernobyl or nuns because religion was just beginning to start thriving again to Brezhnev's daughters which is my current work there, um, and that's about the young women who have to work in factories at the same time, are strip dancers at night in order to make a living and to support their families. 
I'm interested in people and in their environments. Photography allows me or affords me the excuse to go and um, look intimately at a different group of people without being thought as, as crazy. The, so the camera being there allows me that intimacy with people. All right, we're going to critique as a whole group. The critiques will be five minutes uh, a shot. I teach at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, and I teach a range of classes from intro to photography to advanced level classes, and I also teach in the graduate program. And then if you haven't already, just please take some time to look at the prints. Today is our final class, and the students are showing their final projects. I'm really curious about bo having both exist within the same body of work, and maybe it's, I, I think it depends on editing. Will you mind if I take some down? Teaching is critical for my work in the sense that it allows me to exercise my intellect in a different way in terms of art making. I wonder what would happen if you took on uh, the persona of someone else, at, much like a uh, Cindy Sherman or something like that. That well, you know, what what would you, what would your persona be as if you were dressed up as your mother or your grandmother, <laughs> or right? And so that reaction, that's interesting. And I believe I have a lot to share with them. So it's sort of a mutually beneficial relationship. Good job. Sticking sticking with it. a test print it just get, allows me to see what the uh, overall exposure is going to be. Oh, I approach the new work in a totally different way than I do in my portrait work. One, it was done in a three month, three or four month period of time and it's really about passing through rather than standing and focusing and being intimate. When I'm making pictures of people, the, the portraits, the editing comes before with the camera. In this project, the editing came after. I took many more photographs, and the more difficult part was really to edit down to its succinct core of images and then sequence them in a way that gives the viewer the real experience that I wanted them to get. Although I've taken 400 photographs, I've edited them down to approximately 120. Depends on the final install tomorrow. Um, it might be more or less. I was able to condense and overlap the space so that it had this sense of movement. I feel like I've learned a lot from this new project because it allows me to think about the next time I go to Ukraine how I'm going to incorporate architecture into my project and that's sort of been the real learning experience. It's definitely going to be a seedling that I take over to Ukraine. Mm -hmm.